Here you are. Have a fun, take a deep breath. Get him held in, like this. Fight like hell like we do every week. You are the best here. Brett, be informative. You told me to get on. Yeah, Poe. Ready. Ready. We'll slow. Green, green, green. Lock it down, lock it down. Stop destroyed. And I just got drove through like six times on the 14th. What the f is he thinking? That is the stupidest thing I've seen in my career. Literally. Everything you described is accurate. Haven't even finished the second stage yet. Half the field's wrecked. Hell yeah! 11, got it. Brownie there, Matt. Good job, pal. Thanks, man. Good job all day. Great work, my man. Great work. Keep putting yourself in position. We'll win our share, right? We got one back today, brother. Good job. Yeah, for great job, guys. And welcome back to Racing the Draft. My name is Mark. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Good evening, Lost Prophet. Yes, perfect timing. Uh, yes, there's lots of research to do. And uh, because we had an early Xfinity race, uh, I was able to dig a little deeper into some of the numbers and practice and qualifying and try to find out some secrets that might help. Or might not. Who knows? It's uh, Practice is still kind of throwing me for a loop on how we uh, translate that into how well they're going to end up racing. But I think I've got some, some decent data to add into uh, what, you're, what you're digging into there. So thanks for joining in, Lost Profit. I appreciate you being here on time. Um, and uh, thanks, everyone, for uh, hanging in there from last week. I had a great time at Martinsville for the Truck Xfinity and Cup race. Um, just really, really, just like everybody else has said all week, I really wish NASCAR Goodyear would do something about the short track package because it is better in person. I will give NASCAR credit for that. If you're live and in person, there's a... There's a there's there's a lot going on to watch at a race that you don't see on TV. You know, I found it I found it quite fascinating if you don't watch um either Eric Eastup or the Iceberg, uh they do post race breakdowns like um Jeff Gluck and those guys do also, but um the Iceberg was talking about how he kind of tracks you know the last 10% of the race cuz he has a kind of a Cryon that a Chiron that kind of scrolls at the bottom or the top that's got the running order and he got, starts putting it in with you know about ten percent of the of the race left and he didn't have to make an adjustment at all until the last caution which was at, you know with two laps to go so literally the last like fifty laps there was no change in position at Martinsville at all um, so. <laughs> Yeah, uh, there, there's lots of passing on the track. It just none of it was for position. Um, so hopefully NASCAR can figure it out. We don't come back to Richmond until July or August. I think that's our next short track package. Um, so fingers crossed that they can figure something out to get this uh, package a little bit better. But uh, uh, what, what you got here, Lost Profit? I'm probably going to be playing some Tide Dillon. The stats aren't bad here, and he's in the 16 at 5,000. Uh, yeah, uh, Ty Dillon, I think, is definitely a value pick. Um, he's probably going to be fairly owned. Um, once we get into his stats, we'll, we'll kind of kind of look at that. Um, but he's got a really good finishing position here at uh, Texas Motor Speedway. Um, and he is in the 16 car. Now, being in the college car almost has me a little bit more concerned. I almost wish he would be in a Rick Ware car or back in the 77. Um, I think he would probably even have better luck. Um, I I don't know what to make a colleague right now. They seem to potentially have checked out. Um, I don't know if they're just putting more emphasis on the Xfinity side of things um, because I'm, I'm not real sure why you would let a Justin Haley go, um, why you would move A.J. Allmendinger back down. Um, you know, A.J. was kind of like, well, you know, I'll, I'll do whatever the... the the team needs me to do. I'll be there for whatever. And you, you know, you pick up a, a Ty Dillon. 
and sometimes and you just keep putting this random carousel of drivers in. Um, I mean, I think they're in a good situation for road courses, but they just seem to be letting um, the ovals kind of just be whatever. So, I mean, maybe, maybe they are going to sell a charter or two next year and put some more money into Xfinity. I don't, I don't know. I mean, supposedly Stuart Haas is going to be selling charters. Um, and then you have Denny Hamlin coming out today saying that, uh, you know, charters, there aren't any charters because this is the last year of the charter contract. And as of right now, there is no agreement for charters. So the charters may not be worth anything come next year. Who knows? Uh, James Orff, good evening. I uh, hope all is well. Uh, who's my outright winner for tomorrow? Ooh. Um, you got... Um, you got probably, I mean, legitimately five that are really, really capable of winning this race. Um, I really like Kyle Larson. He's extremely fast. You've got Tyler Reddick, who is Vegas's odds um, to win. I don't mind either one of them to win. Uh, William Byron, as we see in this picture, won last year's Texas race in the fall. Um, you've got... Uh, Ty Gibbs, who was super fast uh, during practice, at least for one lap. Um, you've got uh, Denny Hamlin, who has been very, very good. Um, so you've got, you know, five to six guys who potentially easily could, could get this win. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of get into it. We'll start breaking this down. But before we get into that, let's take a look back at the actual optimal lineups from Martinsville. Um, 415 of the 400 laps, so we have 15 laps of overtime. Um, yeah, it did make the race at least a little bit more exciting. Um, no real dominators per se. Um, yeah, you would, you would, you would think with passing being, um, not, not as much passing as, as, as there could be on a short track, you think you would have, uh, somebody who would just run up front and stay up front, but, uh, you know, William Byron, Chase Elliott, Joe Logano, all kind of st- stayed up there and got some laps led. Uh, we did have uh, three place differential guys with Ryan Priest, Michael McDowell, and William Byron. Um, so we did, you know, I guess they did have some passing, but it, it's just, it's not what Martinsville used to be. And I've been going to Martinsville for, I don't know, 30 years or something. Um, I just, hopefully they can figure it out and bring it back. I mean, I will still go and I'll still watch Martinsville just because it's, it's my favorite track, but I just wish they would fix it. Um, but as you can see, some other drivers that uh, ended up finishing well. I mean, I think my thoughts going into last week's race, and at least for DraftKings, um, was about right. I didn't think they were going to be able to pass. I didn't think tire wear was going to be an issue. Um, track position was going to be a premium. Place differential was going to play a factor, but not a huge factor. Um, yeah, it was going to be finishing position. Um, and then, you know, Michael McDowell gaining 14 spots, got that optimal lineup. So the optimal lineup challenge has really gotten tight up top. Uh, Ross Chastain, Ty Gibbs, Noah Gregson, Martin Drex Jr., Bubba Wallace, William Byard, all with three. And then a whole host of guys in two. We've almost got this whole thing filled out, uh, and we haven't even made it to uh, race 10 at Talladega yet. So I think potentially after Talladega, we could see this whole optimal lineup chart filled up. And uh, I don't know, I may have, may have to expand or just leave people off. Um, but either way, we head to Texas this week, as I have stated a couple of times, uh, we, it's, it's kind of a unique old track, um, got reconfigured many years ago and for the most part they screwed it up until they brought the next gen era car out and, uh, the next gen era has kind of made it a little bit more interesting, but it's still, they, they I still think they need to do something with this track. Um, I, I mean, honestly, I think they need to make it something like Atlanta slash Vegas. Um, maybe not as, so it's not quite pack racing, but it's different than the other mile and a half. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what they should do with Texas. Um, but I think they need to come up with something different. I think these two different ends play really weird games with these cars, and it's just just weird. Um, I know they were trying to go after a Darlington-esque type of configuration on a mile and a half, and it just kind of didn't work. So, 
we'll see what they do. But, and, uh, you know, we don't have another race here until this time next year, and we don't have the schedule for next year. So there is time for them to get this changed. Um, but either way, Texas Motor Speedway, it is a intermediate to tri-oval style track. Uh, the track length is one and a half miles in length, 20 degrees in turns one and two, and completely different 24 degrees in turns three and four. You can almost hold it wide open in three and four, but you have to almost lift completely in turns one and two. Uh, the race length here is shorter than it normally is for Texas. It is only 267 laps. Um, down air points will still play a... Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll be important. Uh, you need to probably target at least one or two. Um, 186.9 dominator points, uh, coming from laps led of 66.75 and fast laps of 120.15. Um, and I think we'll see kind of a, you know, we'll, we're definitely going to probably at least need to target one to two dominators and that, you know, that, that second dominator, somebody's going to probably finish in the top three, uh, along with the winner being somebody who probably dominates the race. Um, other track comparisons, because none of them really compare, but they kind of do. I don't know. It's weird. Uh, Kansas, Vegas, Miami, Charlotte are all tracks that you can kind of look back on, uh, especially Vegas from a couple of uh, weeks ago. Uh, it's the only other mile and a half track that we've run at. So you can definitely keep that in mind when we're looking at things. In fact, when I when we get to the driver breakdown, I'll, I'll kind of fill you in on that. But uh, optimal lineups from the past Two races, at least in the next gen era, um, we had one dominator, uh, Bubba Wallace, um, started first, finished third, led 111 laps of the 334, so almost a third of the race. Uh, Bubba Wallace led. Uh, William Byron ended up getting the win, um, coming from 18th and finishing first. Kevin Harvick. Um, another place differential. So I mean, we had five place differentials. Um, we will probably see a fair amount of cautions. Um, tire wear and the speeds here really have a tendency to allow for screw-ups <laughs> um, or tire failures. Not necessarily the fact that the, the tire falls off. It's just the tire will explode. Um, um, just because of the extreme pressures that are getting put on because of the speeds they carry going into the corners. So we we do have a tendency to have a few more cautions here. In fact, in the Xfinity Series, Texas is the highest, um, the track with the most cautions. I saw that on the broadcast earlier today, and I was like, oh, wow, that's kind of crazy. But yeah, it, it, it happens here. Um, a lot of times they, they don't typically tear up a whole lot of cars. It's usually a lot of times uh, one car spin or, you know, two car spin. So... It's kind of like taking one car out at a time. Um, but in the 2022 race, which was the first year of the next-gen era car, um, same similar thing. No, we didn't have any real dominators. I mean, you had Tyler Reddick lead 70 laps, uh, four-place differential guys. Um, and, you know, it's mostly guys finishing up in the top 10 or top 5. So, um, And then 2021 and 20 was the last gen era car but kind of similar thing one dominator for 21 no dominators for the fall 20 race um, place differential kind of played a small key but finishing positions definitely still played a key into it so keep that in mind um as as i've kind of stated throughout this year so far i am kind of looking back at past races and guys that finished in the top 15 in draft king points and where their starting spots were uh, it's kind of gives me a better judge of uh, or idea of kind of where to target. You know, is it you know the car is starting up front? Is it the car starting in the middle of the pack, or is it the car is coming from the rear? This track tends to be more middle of the pack, and some guys that are starting up front and stay up front. Um, so when you're making making those targets, thirty first or worst, we've only we only get point six on average. Um, starting 31st or worst. Uh, the front row is not um, a bad place. You get, uh, we've gotten two races in the last four years that uh, both front row starters finished in the top 15 in points, and then only one um, in the other two. So we've got, you know, pretty much five, almost five and a half coming from one through 10, another five and a half coming from 11 through 20. And then kind of three, three and a half coming from 21st or worse. 
and not a whole lot outside of the top 30 um, are making the top 15 in, in DraftKing points. All right, now let's get into, I spent a lot of time on uh, practice and qualifying today, because like I said, I had extra time. And I still don't know what to make of it, because we don't have severe tire wear, but I mean, after watching trucks in Xfinity, I mean, literally a tenth of a second per lap can be a ton of, uh, can be a lot of car links on this track. So they're not so tight that they, I don't know, they, it, you miss a corner here and you can lose two seconds. Um, and to get those two seconds back, it's tough unless somebody else misses. Um, it, it's interesting. So pretty much what we've got here. So this is the um, Hendrick page. So I did a Hendrick page, a Gibbs page, and a Penske page. Um, and so I kind of took Kyle Larson, who was starting from the pole. He was very quick in practice. Um, but as you can see, he, from, quack, from practice to qualifying, or qualifying to practice, he was point. One nine four, so two tenths of a second faster in qualifying. Well, that makes sense because you kind of bump the air pressures up, you do some different things to the car to make it go faster for one or two laps. You're not worried about the tire wear or the tire fall off. You just want to go fast. So you should always typically see an increase in speeds from the practice speed, fastest practice speed to the qualifying lap. So we did see that with Kyle Larson, point nine four. Um, and then from practice to his 10 lap consecutive average was a fall off of three tenths to four tenths. So 3.4 um, tenths of a second, which I mean, for 10 laps, that's actually a decent amount. Um, once again, I would love to see an hour long practice where these guys had a chance to do 30, 35, 40 lap runs. And we could really see how much of a fall off these guys are getting. Um, because the fall-offs are kind of a little bit all over the all over the board a little bit. Um, but then we've got Chase Elliott, who is starting from 24th. So Chase Elliott's starting, you know, towards the middle to the back half of the pack. Um, and in qualifying, I mean, he's almost he's almost four tenths slower than Kyle Larson. And in practice, he was pretty close. Um, he was only uh, 1.26 seconds off. Um, and then in the 10 lap consecutive average, he was almost four tenths off. So his qualifying and his 10 laps were about four tenths off of Kyle Larson's fastest speed. Um, somebody who's a little closer in speed, William Byron, was less than a tenth off in qualifying um, from first to six. So pretty, really tight towards the, the front, uh, the guys who qualified one through 10. Um, and his Practice speeds were pretty close too. He was only just just a tick over a tenth off of Kyle Larson's practice speeds, and then very close on long run speed, um, if you can consider ten laps a long run. So that's kind of the look at the Hendrick group. Then if we go over here to Ty Gibbs, now, Ty Gibbs put down just an absolute blistering speed, and we'll just scroll back up. So Ty Gibbs had a fast lap of twenty eight point three four. Kyle Larson's fastest lap was a 28.56. Two tenths faster and the fastest. And Kyle Larson was not slow. He was third fastest in single lap. <coughs> so that gives you an indication of the lap that Ty Gibbs put down. He was not able to duplicate it at all ever again. It was his third lap of practice. He was one of the first cars out, so he had a very green racetrack. And the car just stuck. Um, so that is kind of a little bit of an, an anomaly. Um, and I mean, neither Denny Hamlin nor Martin Truex Jr. were even close to these to him, um, at least in that single lap speed. Now, things changed quite a bit once we got to the 10 lap consecutive average for all these guys. Um, I mean, even Ty Gibbs dropped off from 1st to 12th. And then... Um, Oh, I do notate here, we didn't see a huge difference between practice one and practice two, um, mostly because the, the age of the track, it didn't rubber up like the short tracks do, um, but I'm still going to notate 
practice one and practice two with this little um, two next to the practice. Um, so we didn't really see a huge difference. I mean, Kyle Larson was in the second practice, and so was William Byron. Um, and they were still very, very quick um, right there mixed up with the first group. Um, so if we, if we kind of look here, I mean, Denny Hamlin was almost a tenth off in qualifying, and Denny Hamlin missed the second round of qualifying, but still not bad. Um, only 0 0.098 seconds, so less than a tenth off. Now, his single lap speed, of course, because that weird anomaly, um, was almost four tenths off, but the 10 lap consecutive average was pretty close. He was only uh, 0.165 off. Um, and very similar numbers to Martin Truex Jr. Um, so, you know, the Toyotas are all very close. And as you can see, I mean, they qualifying second, 11th, and 6th. Now we see kind of a different fall-off game here with the Fords. Um, you got Ryan Blaney starting in 7th with a 28.480. Um, you know, he actually had, he was 1. 0.148, so one and a half tenths faster in um, qualifying than he was in practice. And then uh, from practice to his 10 lap consecutive average, he fell off almost four tenths. So most people were kind of falling off four tenths. Except for Joey Logano. Joey Logano almost got, almost got faster. Um, in fact, he did get faster than Ryan Blaney in the 10 lap consecutive run almost by half a hundredth. I don't know if that's even a thing. Um, half a tenth. Um, and then Austin Center did not make a 10 lap consecutive average. But these are kind of all the differences to Blaney. All right, so now, like I said, I had a lot of time today and uh, really dug deep into practice and practice times. So this up here, the, the top, of course, is Ty Gibbs, fast lap at 28.345. The fastest 10 lap consecutive time was a 28.860. So there was a fall off from those two. And these are two different people, but the fall off was almost 0.4 um, on average. So the average fall off was almost 0.442 across the board. The guys with the least amount of fall off were the guys that were, that were slow. Well, if that tells you anything, your fall off was not as great if you went a little bit slower so some, sometimes the whole saying sometimes you have to go slow to go fast this is kind of what that is kind of indicating is you go a little slower in the beginning and you can hold the speed for longer because the tires don't fall off as bad you're not beating the equipment up as they say um, but these are the guys that had the least amount of fall off and most of them were the slower guys to that started slow. Now, here's kind of one anomaly that I kind of like to see was the Tyler Reddick. Tyler Reddick's practice rank was seventh in single lap speed, but he was what's the seventh best fall off, and he only fell off two tenths or two, just a little over two tenths from lap one to lap ten. So that's kind of a pretty good indication that Tyler Reddick's going to have a, he's got a really well-balanced car. He's got a really fast car. Um, and he was actually really good in the uh, 5, 10, 15, 20 lap uh, runs. He was either first or second next to Kyle Larson. So James, or who was it? Uh, Lost Profit. Which one? Outright winner. James asked me about the outright winner. That's why I really kind of looking at this Tyler Reddick play. Um, and the Kyle Larson play. Both of their long run speeds were very, very comparable. Larson, they're both starting, you know, decently far up to the front. I mean, Larson, you can't start any further up front. He's starting from the pole. Um, but then, so that's kind of, I'm going to, I'm, I'm really interested to see how this fall off metric works when it comes to how well they end up finishing a race if they don't you know, have mechanical issues or carnage issues. So it, it, it'll be interesting to see how they're able to move up compared to this fall off. So this is just something brand new that I'm looking at. 
we'll we'll kind of kind of keep track of this. I'll keep doing this for a couple of weeks and kind of see if this is an indicator of who to potentially target that's starting towards the rear. Um, but guys that were that had the worst fall off, and I don't think Chris Busher. I don't think this number is realistic. I think on his tenth lap, he was coming into the pits and it scored it as a as a lap, or he had to slow down towards the end of his lap because either Kyle Busch wrecked or um, Jimmy Johnson wrecked. Um, I'm thinking something happened um, because were, Chris Busher should not have fallen off this much, but um, he did fall off 1.2 seconds on his 10 lap run. That's an extreme fall off for this track. Um, kind of the Eric Jones is kind of the same boat. He almost fell off a full second. So I'm almost wondering this is if this is an anomaly um, or and it's really hard to kind of tell when you're watching the TV because they don't you can't see everybody at the track on the track at the same time, especially if somebody's having an issue, they focus in on that person. So I, I really wish I could find the data that gave me every lap time and I could kind of get a better indication if there was something that happened in the middle of their laps or whatever. Um, but Kyle Larson, or Carson Hosevar, Ty Gibbs had the most fall off. Now, Ty Gibbs, like I said, had an anomaly with that super fast lap. And he kind of settled in at a 29.068. You know, if we, if we kind of look up, that kind of falls in line with about where everybody else was on their 10 lap speed. So that's why I really think that that fast lap was just an incredibly fast, fast lap. So I'm not overly worried about the Ty Gibbs play. All right, let's get into the driver-by-driver driver breakdown. Oh, that's kind of weird. I didn't know it came over there. Okay. Um, Kyle Larson, most expensive guy on the board, $10,000 starting from the pole position. So um, I it looked when I looked back at Texas, there was only three races and only two that had the next-gen era car in it. So I pulled in the Kansas fall race from last year, mile-and-a-half track. Um, and Vegas um, from earlier this year, along with the last three Texas races. When I look at this this line down here, um, we already discussed his practice speeds, but he's starting from the pole. Lost profit, I love all this data. Yeah, I do too. I'm just wondering how much it's going to translate into actual results on the track. But that's going to be the interesting thing, is to see, okay, we, we've got all this data does it actually even mean anything? I'm sure it does, but what figuring out how to decipher it's going to be the interesting part. So, like I said, I, I told you guys a couple weeks ago I was going to start digging into the practice speeds, and today was the day I dug, and I dug deep. <laughs> um, but Kyle Larson, at these five races that we're comparing to, he's got two wins, three top fives, four top tens, four top twenties, a 78.0 DraftKings average, and an average finish of 9.2. Um, and that's with a finish of 31st in the fall race here at Texas last year. Um, 18 total starts here at Texas with two wins and five top fives, 10 top 20s, a 17.9 average finish. Um, and over up in the top right um, is my ranking system. And this breaks down past races, history, uh, similar style tracks, um, practice speeds, qualifying speed, um, the last 10 races that they've raced, all of that information gets inputted into a sp spreadsheet that keeps growing um, more and more data. Um, and it gives me a ranking. And Kyle Larson comes in ranked first. So James, once again, uh, my ranking system has Kyle Larson in first. I think it may have Tyler Reddick in second. I'm not sure. Um, but he's top five. Um, and my usage... Uh, preliminarily, I'm probably looking at anywhere from 35 to 45 percent usage on Kyle Larson. Potentially could go as high as 50, but I think probably the sweet spot is going to be probably about 40 to 45 percent. William Byron, three-time winner already this year. Man, guys, I'm fired this year. Um, and I don't know why that's sliding over like it is. That's annoying. I'll have to fix that. Um, there's always something wrong with this spreadsheet or this uh, PowerPoint. Um, William Byron starting from the sixth position, um, 13th in single lap, fifth and 10 lap consecutive average. So kind of hovering right there near the top 10 in practice speeds. 
Um, he did win the fall race here last year, and at the five tracks we're looking at, he's finished in the top 20 all five times with two top fives. He's got a seventh place average finish. Um, yeah, I mean, I think William Byron is definitely somebody that uh, we, we can definitely kind of pick to either potentially be a dominator or at least be somebody who's going to finish um, probably in the top five. So I think William Byron will start up front and stay up front. I think most of these guys that are this expensive, they, 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 there's a reason why they're expensive. Um, they just grade out really, really well for this track. Um, Denny Hamlin, 10,500 starting in 11th. Um, his practice speeds were eh, slightly off of that, but pretty close. He was 6th in single lap, 19th in 10 lap consecutive average. Um, he does not have a win in the five races that we are comparing to, but pretty good average finish of 7.2. He finished 5th in this race here at Texas last year. Um, he ran really well at Vegas earlier this year until I think he was, I think he spun, um, which ended up hurting his finishing position. But either way, um, Denny Hamlin should be a solid, solid pick. A small amount of place differential here. Um, and if we look at his total track history, he's got three wins here at Texas. I'm not sure if he's got any of those wins on this new configuration or not. I, I need to separate that out a little bit because it, it definitely changes the entire dynamic of the track. So it used to be almost identical to the old Atlanta. Um, super high banked, super fast. Um, yeah, and I completely forgot about uh, Michael McDowell's flip. Um, lost profit, yeah. You and I think so similar. Yeah, um, like, hopefully that's a good thing. Um, I think you end up doing pretty well in DraftKings, if I remember correctly. Um, and I, I, I'm up and down on it. Um, I've been definitely hot hot and cold this year so far. I'm hoping uh, today is a hot day, or tomorrow is a hot day for, for DraftKings. I need, I need to take home a bag. Uh, I need to pad up the, uh, the old uh, pocketbook there so I can keep betting strong. Uh, Ryan Blaney, 10,200, starting in 7th. Pretty much practice in 7th. The single lap was 6th. Ten lap consecutive average was eighth, and he's got a ten point six average finish. I, I mean, I, I expect I mean, Ryan Blaney does not have a win yet. He does have one win here at Texas in his past. Um, average finish ten point six. I mean, uh, there there's no reason not to fade off of Ryan Blaney. He definitely has the potential to have a very strong race here. Um, he was he was very fast in practice, so. Uh, Ranked third on my ranking system, 35 to 40% usage. All right, Tyler Reddick here, $10,000 starting in the fourth position. He was seventh in single lap, first in 10 lap consecutive average, 7.6 average finish. He's got two wins at the five tracks we're comparing to, um, three top fives, four top tens. I mean, his, his stats are almost identical to Kyle Larson's. Um, finished in 25th last fall. Um, he does have a win here at Texas, an 11.3 average finish. I, I mean, his practice speeds, like I said, it was pretty much either he or Kyle Larson who were the fastest in the 5, 10, 15, 20 lap runs. Um, and the two of them have battled it out many times. I mean, Tyler Reddick was on um, Kyle Larson's bumper at Vegas um, a couple weeks ago. So... Tyler Reddick is really, really good at these tracks. I'm on a cold streak, but it'll turn around soon. Yeah, no, I, I have no doubt. Um, and I'm hoping this, uh, this, this little bit more of data will, uh, will come in handy. All right, Martin Truex Jr., 9,700. I mean, all these guys starting up front, practiced up front, and for the most part, finish up front. Now, Martin Truex Jr. has had a little bit of a rough go with these ball and a half tracks, especially here at Texas. Uh, he's only got one top 10, two top 20s in the five races that we're comparing to and a 23.2 average finish. Martin has never won in the 36 starts here at Texas, and only five of the 36 he's finished in the top five. So I could easily see the argument for fading off of Martin Truex Jr. His single lap speed was okay, and his 10 lap was not great. So I could see fading off of Martin Truex Jr. here, um, and I kind of have... I'm targeting probably 15-20% usage. Uh, next in line here, Christopher Bell. Um, 
starting third, $9,500. Um, finished fourth here in the race last year. Got a 16.4 average finish. Doesn't have a win, but he's only raced here seven times. Um, I'm going to fade off of Christopher Bell this week. Um, I don't know if we're, we're kind of seeing a cold, cold spell for Christopher Bell, um, but he did not have a good race at Martinsville last week. He was okay at Richmond. Um, you know, they've, he's definitely kind of, ever since he got his win, you know, I don't know if they're trying a few things different to see kind of if they can build some speed going already looking ahead to um, playoffs, but for some reason Christopher Bell has kind of fallen off since we were at Phoenix. Um, maybe this is a race he turns around, but this is not typically one of his better tracks. All right, Chase Elliott. Um, starting 24th. I was a little shocked by this, and I'm, I'm, I just don't, I think he just missed it a little bit. Um, I mean, his practice speeds were Oh, they're not bad. 15th in single lap, 21st in 10 lap consecutive average. They're not great. Um, out of 15 total starts, he's only got three top fives. Um, but he's got four top 20s in the five races we're comparing to, and 12 out of 15 top 20s. So all indications are he should definitely get in some top 20. And I think Chase Elliott, they've been showing much better speed recently. Um, they had a great run last week at Martinsville, so momentum is on their side. I, I think he's probably at least due for a top 10. Um, and that, you know, at 9,300, that's, that, that's getting to the top 10. That's going to put you at least in the top 15 in the point getters, possibly even put you in the optimal lineup. Um, Ross Chastain, $9,200. Uh, starting 12th, he was fourth in single lap, fourth in 10 lap consecutive, so very consistent in practice today. And at the five tracks we're comparing to, two top fives, two top tens, four top 20s, a 12th place average finish, pretty much average finish of already starting. He finished uh, second in the race here last fall. Um, so that was his one top five at this track in the nine total starts with four top 20s. So I could see his total body of work here at Texas and could kind of make you fade off of it a little bit, but remember, he's only had two years in this number one car at Texas, because we only race here once a year. So it, it's really hard to get a real judge on how fast they are or aren't at Texas. Um, but, you know, I, I don't mind the Ross Chastain play here. They've been showing really good speed. Uh, Trackhouse, I think, will be fine. Um, I also like his teammate, Daniel Suarez, this weekend, too. Um, so, he comes in ranked fourth on my ranking system and 20, 25% ownership. We've got to come up with a nickname for this guy. Um, Kyle Spinny Bush. I don't know. Kyle, I like to spin my car in circles and drive backwards Bush. I, I, I don't. Kyle Bush hates this car. Kyle Bush hates this car and he hates this tire. And I think he hates his job. Um, other than Friday night, he won. And today, he spun and in his interview he pretty much was like i hated the truck the tires sucked but i won this guy's the biggest whiner crybaby in the world um who wins more than anybody else um nine thousand dollars starting 35th because he spun and hit the wall during practice um on lap 10 so we didn't get a 10 lap consecutive average out of him he was 27th in single lap so he was slow to begin with the five last races that we're comparing to, he's got a 22.2 average finish. He finished 34th in this race here last year, where I think he spun by himself, if I remember correctly. This next-gen car, it just is not working for Kyle Busch. Plain and simple. Um, he's coming in ranked at 12th, um, but I'm still fading off. And there's going to be a lot of people that potentially are going to put him in because he's Kyle Busch and he's starting 35th. Probably he's going, I think he's probably going to a backup car. Um, he doesn't like the car, doesn't like the tires, can't figure it out. Um, so, I mean, are, are, we, are we looking at a Kyle Busch that's going to finish 28th because he hates the car? Um, I mean, if he, if he couldn't get the car to turn well enough in 10 laps or figure out what was going on in 10 laps. 
there's a chance these fast guys are going to lap him within 20, 25 laps. Um, especially starting 35th, mired in the muck. Um, so I, even starting 35th, yeah, there's a ton of place differential, but what, 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 what is, what has Kyle done recently? Other than whine and cry and win a truck race. Um, so I'm, I'm, I mean, yeah, I've got some ownership because if he does happen to pop, I mean, it's a ton of place differential, but I just don't, don't see it. Um, Joey Logano, 8,800. Joey's starting to turn things around this year. He's, I think he's back up in almost top 10 in points. Um, had a good run at Martinsville last week. Had another good run at Richmond two weeks ago. Uh, starting in 20th, he was ninth in single lap, third in 10 lap consecutive average, so he just missed a little bit on qualifying. Okay. Uh, more place differential potential for us uh, in DraftKings. In the last five races that we're comparing to, he's got two top fives, three top tens. 13.4 average finished. He finished 21st here in the race last year. Okay. Um, but out of 30 total starts here at Texas, he's got 22 top 20s. So, uh, I mean, well over two-thirds of the time, he's going to be better than 20th. So, I don't mind taking some usage on Joey Logano, and his uh, partner in crime, Ryan Blaney, was really fast in practice. So, I think Joey Logano will end up being okay. Uh, you know, so I he could easily be in a top 10 spot, but I don't, unless he's got some real issues, I think he definitely finishes better than 20th. Uh, Bubba Wallace, who ran really well here last fall, finishing in third, um, which gave him his best finish because prior to that, it was bad. Um, the five tracks we're comparing to, a uh, 25.4 average finish. Um, and that's including a third place finish. So when it's been bad, it's been bad. Um, he was pretty he wasn't, eh, he was okay in 10 lap run, but 25th in single lap run. 20.8 average finish here at Texas. Um, I think Bubble Wall, it's going to be another one of those Bubble Wall shows that we could see speed early out of him. The question is, is he going to be able to hold on like he did at Martinsville and like he did at uh, Richmond? Um, and we've seen that recently out of Bubba. Bubba's been running really, really well. These mile and a half tracks, though, have kind of been a little bit of a, I don't know. It, they've been a little bit different for him. Um, so I don't really know what to do with Bubba Wallace. I'm going to have some ownership, but not a ton. I could easily see fading off of Bubba Wallace. Uh, Ty Gibbs, who, God, been knocking on the door forever on uh, getting a win. Had really good runs and much better runs late in the races. Um, I'm telling you, once, once, it, once he knocks the door down, it's we're going to be in trouble. Um, it, Ty Gibbs is going to be like William Byron is right now in two years, three years. Uh, but for now, eighty five hundred dollars, really good starting position outside pole. Practice speed was great, but like I said, that seemed to be a little bit of an anomaly. Um, and he's kind of like Bob Wallace; he'll run really good at the beginning of the race, and all of a sudden things will just kind of fade off. And he'll fade towards the back. Now, his wheelhouse is a uh, mile and a half tracks. So this is definitely the style track that Ty Gibbs likes to run. If I remember correctly, he has one here at Texas in the Xfinity Series. Um, so I would not be surprised for Ty Gibbs to have a good run. Is it good enough to either win or finish second? I don't think so. Um... Like I said, that, that first lap speed, I mean, it was two-tenths faster than Kyle Larson's fastest speed. That's just, it was just, I don't know if he got a gust of wind down the backstretch um, or something, but either way, I, I, yeah, I'm going to fade off of Ty Gibbs a little bit. I just don't think this is the weekend for it. Uh, Alex Bowman, next in line here at $8,400. Starting 14th, he was 5th in single laps. A pretty good single lap speed there out of Alex Bowman. 13th, 10 lap consecutive average. And then he just kind of missed a little bit on his uh, his qualifying starting in 14th. So maybe a little bit of place differential potential here with Alex Bowman. Um, does not have a top 5 in the last 5 races we're comparing to. Uh, and a 20.4 average finish. And finished in 12th in this race last year. I think we're kind of, I think Alex Bowman is kind of starting, finishing where he starts. 
So that's just kind of my indication on Alex Bowman. I mean, he might get to a 7th, 8th, or ninth, but I'm not sure 6 or 7 spots is going to be enough at $8,400. Um, so, I mean, I've got some usage on him, but a little bit of a fade on Alex Bowman. Uh, Brad Keselowski. Here's kind of my pick for a long shot. Um, he's at plus 4,500, so what was that, 45 to 1? Yeah, 45 to 1. Um, starting 22nd, he was second in single lap practice. He did not do a 10 lap consecutive run, so I do not have any idea what his long run speed is. Don't know why he didn't do a 10 lap consecutive run. Um, he did 19 laps of practice, um, but he's good at this style track. He's got an 8.2 average finish. And remember at the Kansas race, he and Chris Buescher, uh ended up having really, really good finishes. I think both top five um, at Vegas earlier this year. So I, you know, if you're looking for a sneaky, a sneaky pick, decent amount of place differential, and Brad's kind of still knocking on the door to getting that first next-gen win. Um, I, I mean, I could easily see Brad K getting a win tomorrow in this race. Um, but I think something's going to have to happen to Tyler Reddick and Kyle Larson, just to be honest. Um, but I think Brad Kozlowski is easily a top 10, if not potentially even a top five candidate for tomorrow. So, um, I definitely like the Brad K play for tomorrow. And I don't mind the Chris Buescher play. Uh, he was eighth in single lap. Now his 10 lap consecutive average fell to 29th. But like I said, it fell off too extreme um, for, for no real reason. So I think he, he had to have a, have a lap inside that 10 lap run that either he had to check up for somebody or he had, couldn't finish the lap fully because of one of the guys uh, getting into a wreck early, during his, his run. I'm not real sure. So I think the, tw- the 10 lap consecutive average we're seeing out of Chris Buescher is an anomaly. So he was eighth in single lap. He has had some tough times at these mile and a half tracks, though. Uh, I don't mind the Chris Buescher play. I'd like the Brad K play better. Uh, Chase Briscoe, who has quietly been having a pretty good year. Um, kind, of, kind of just always seems to be around finishing top 10 or top 15 this year. So Chase Briscoe quietly is having a pretty good year. I promise he's starting fifth. And I still just don't trust Ford and Stuart Haas. Um, Jacob's just still kind shy after the um, such bad year they had last year. They've they've turned things around slightly this year, um, but they still have races where they're hit and miss. Um, he was 17th in single lap, 22nd in five and 10 lap consecutive average. I mean, look at his history here. He's got a 12th place average finish out of his four total starts here, and the five tracks we're comparing to, he's got a 14th place average finish. He finished 10th in this race last year. And Stuart Haas was struggling last year. Um, the problem is, I don't know if Chase Briscoe is a top 5 um, for this race. I, I mean, I could see him being top 10, probably top 15, which is a good run. But uh, I'm, I'm not willing to take... I mean, I might have him in a lineup or two, but it's, it's a, I'm faded off of, Chris, uh, off of Chase Briscoe this week. Noah Gregson, his teammate in the 10 car, $7,500, starting 21st. He was 26th in 10 lap, cons- or 26th single lap and 10th in 10 lap consecutive average. Why well, do I have 20 lap there? Oh, because last week they, I did the 20 lap run to see if there was any tire fall off, which there was not. Um, two starts here with a 13.5 average finish. That's pretty good for Noah. Um, so, well, two starts out of the five tracks we're comparing to. Uh, with a 13.5 average finish, he finished really well at the Vegas race earlier this year. I do remember that. I think he finished like 8th or ninth. Um, so maybe there's a little bit of room here with Noah Gregson. I don't mind having a little bit of ownership in Noah this weekend. So there's always potential. He's been doing much better in the 10 car than he ever did last year in the 42. Uh, Daniel Suarez, 
The other track house car, $7,200, starting 17th. He was 20th in single lap, 6th in 10 lap consecutive average. He finished 8th in this race last year, and all five tracks that we're comparing to, he's got top 20s uh, with 11.4 average finish. And he started here at Texas 12 total times with a 15.4 average finish. So he tends to like this racetrack. Um, and starting in 17th, got got some room for for upward movement his practice speeds were i mean pretty comparable and not a little bit better than his starting position so i don't mind having some ownership in daniel and if they they've got the win under the belt so if they need to play a different strategy which could possibly give them a better finishing position they're going to be willing to do it because they've got that win in their pocket um that if uh william martin just keeps winning everything we have no fear of Ever getting the 16 total winners. Uh, Eric Jones, $7,000, starting 27th. But his practice speeds were pretty much there. Other than he's pretty good here, he's got an average finish, well, 13th of the five races we're comparing to. And out of his 13 total starts here, he's got a 12.9 average finish. Starting 27th, practice speeds were off, and I get that. And I think we're kind of seeing a little bit of growing pains with... Uh, Legacy Motor Club moving over to Toyota, um, but I think there—I mean, there, there's definitely place differential potential here with Eric Jones. Um, but kind of, what have you done for me lately? And it's been a little bit of a rough patch. So I'm gonna have some ownership, not have a whole lot of ownership with Eric Jones. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, Josh Berry, 6800, who kind of like some of the guys we've talked about, have had really good starts to races. And have just faded in the last 20% of a race. Um, so Josh Barry needs to get that figured out. He needs to to start finishing these races off. Um, and I think that may be a little bit of a product of kind of coming from late models. The races aren't as long. Then going to Xfinity where the races aren't quite as long. And we're kind of getting into these longer races that, you know, you're just not used to doing it for that long. It takes takes some time and adjustment. Um, so I think Josh Barry's going to be around for, for quite a few years and, uh, pretty excited to see him continue to move up. His practice speeds were good. 11th and single lap, 14th and 10 lap consecutive average, starting 25th. So we've got some place differential potential here with Josh Berry. Um, I'll have a little bit of ownership, but until I start seeing consistently uh, finishing off races better, um, I'm going to probably fade off. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, good to see old uh, Jimmy Johnson back for a few races. I just don't like it when you hit the wall. Um, in practice and we don't get a real chance to see if you actually had or didn't have any speed in your car um so we have no earthly idea but starting 37th um and we don't have any stats in the last five races here texas vegas and kansas um so we could look at his what did you do for me a long time ago and it's an 11.5 average finish with seven total wins here at texas um really good stats but uh yeah you messed up your car in practice, so I have no earthly idea if you actually have any speed or not. And so far, all of his return races have not turned out very good for Jimmy Johnson. I'm going to have some ownership because there's pretty much nowhere to go but up for Jimmy. Um, but, I mean, if you start 37th and you finish 29th, it still doesn't do me any good at $6,700. I need a $5,000 person to do that, not a thirty, not a $6,700. So it's good to see him back. I don't have a whole lot of faith that it's going to do well, so I do have some ownership. But, I, I mean, my guess is a lot of people are just going to plug and play him and Kyle Busch. Um, and I'll probably have a lineup or two that have got both of them in it, just in case they both decide to go and run top 15 or we get some carnage and they end up finishing well. But I think, you know, if you were to run this race a thousand times, I think they probably get an average finish of 25th. So, just just my guess. Uh, John Hunter, let me check. 6,500, starting 30th. That's about where his practice speeds were. So, I mean, you know, if we're looking at Jimmy Johnson and trying to figure out maybe what his speed was, you know, we can look at his teammates. We look at Eric Jones, who was slow in practice. We look at John Hunter, let me check. Another teammate. Not very fast in practice. So, you know, I mean, John Hunter starting 30th, and he's been struggling a little bit lately with this next-gen car. Um, 22nd place average finish at starting 30th. 
And that's only a one race sample. If we look at his three race samples here at Texas, he's got a 21.7. Uh, I mean, I'll have a little bit, but not much. I don't, I don't really trust the John Hunter Nemechek play. Uh, Austin Cedric next in line here at sixty-four hundred dollars, starting in the eighth position. Um, he is starting way further up than he should be. Fourteenth um, in single lap, did not do a ten lap consecutive average. A twenty-five point five average finish over the four races, the five races that we're comparing to. He did not race the twenty-one season in the Cup Series. So it's only four race sample and a 17.3 average finish total here at Texas starting eighth. There's just nothing that points to him having a top 10. And if he's not going to be in the top 10, I have no interest. So faded off of Austin Cedric. Austin Dillon, who just continues to have the absolute worst luck in the Cup Series, um, 6,300. I'm almost beginning to wonder if this is much more of just a product of Richard Childress racing this year, and it's, they've got a voodoo doll stuck somewhere in the walls at Richard Childress Racing, um, because between he and Kyle Busch, they have both been about awful. Um, 6,300, starting 15th, when your practice speed was 32nd, and you didn't do a 10-lap consecutive run. Um... You've got an average finish of 23.4 at the five races we're looking at, and your total body of work at Texas is a 19.5, which does include one win, but I don't even remember when that one win was. So it was a long time ago. So you're starting way too far up for me to be interested in the unluck of Richard Childress Racing and Austin Dillon. All right, next in line here, Michael McDowell, who has the world's worst wreck I've ever seen in my entire life on a mile-and-a-half track. Here at Texas. That was before they reconfigured it. Uh, $6,200 starting 13th. He was pretty good practice. 12th in single lap, 7th in 10 lap consecutive average. Typically when Michael Medall shows up decently fast, he ends up racing pretty fast. Um, now do I think Michael Medall goes up and gets into the top 10? Mm, probably not. Does Michael Medall stay somewhere between 10th and 15th? Yeah, there's a pretty good, decent chance of that. Um, I mean, he's got an 18.8 .8 average finish at the five tracks we're looking at. But if we look at his total body work here at um, Texas, he's never finished in the top 10. Eight times in the top 20, but never in the top 10 with a 35.7 average finish. Uh, I'm probably going to lower my usage from 10 to 15 to 5 to 10. Starting too far up for me. Uh, and that's why I like to do this video. I get to kind of see where my projections are lying and be like, oop, that's probably too much. That was probably too much. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. here next in line at 30. Starting 31st, he's $6,100 in DraftKings. 19th in single lap, 16th in 10 lap consecutive average. Um, out of the five tracks we're comparing to, he's got an average finish of 22nd, which is much better than his qualifying spot of 31st. He finished 9th in this race last year. Okay, that's pretty good. Um... 20 total starts here at Texas with a 21.5 with only one top 10, but 11 top 20s. Um, so half the time he's finished in the top 20. Practice speeds were okay. Um, I don't mind throwing a few lineups at Ricky Stenhouse Jr. to see if any of them stick. Um, you know, I mean, we get back here anyways. It's kind of like playing the lottery. I mean, I said the same thing last week at Martinsville, and it really was. It was just kind of a lottery pick um, back there. Uh, Austin Hill who actually ended up having a pretty good um, Xfinity race, uh, was leading there towards the end. He didn't have to, he still had to pit, um, but he still ended up finishing, I think, top 10. Um, so Austin Hill is definitely good at these style tracks. Now the question is, he's running for Richard Childress in the cup car. Maybe he can have some luck um, that his other two teammates can't seem to have. He's starting 34th, so he's kind of starting towards the back. Can't really go any further back. Um, I guess you could. There are like 38 guys starting this race. But Austin Hill, stay on the lead lap, stay alive, don't wreck, and you end up getting a, probably a 23rd, um, which at $6,000 might be enough to be in the top 15 in points. Not sure if they get you in the optimal. The optimal is going to be much more. It would be about $5,000. But... No real room to go but up for Austin Hill. So I'll, I do have some ownership in Austin Hill, 10 to 15%. 
Uh, Carson Osvar, starting 16th, practice lap of 18th and 27th and 10 lap consecutive average. He's got a 17.0 average finish at the five tracks we're comparing to, and a 16th place average finish here at Texas, where he finished 16th in the race last year, starting 16th. I'm not sure you get any better than 16th. Maybe 15th. But Carson Osvar is just notorious for finishing where he starts, or slightly worse. Um, Typically doesn't have a whole lot of place differential movement upwards. Um, I mean, I mean, is 16th enough at 5,900? Not when you don't have any movement at all. So I'm faded off of Carson as far this week, just starting a little bit further up than I want him to. Um, same thing can be said about Corey LaJoy here. Starting 23rd, single lap speed of 23rd in practice and 25th and 10 lap consecutive average where he's got an average finish of 22.8, so pretty much 23rd place average finish over the last five races we're looking at. And here in Texas, he's got a 27.6 average finish. The only finish in the top 23 out of 10 times, so 30% of the time he's finished in the top 20. Starting 23rd, I think he's starting too far up, or at best you're going to finish where you started. Maybe you get to 17, 18th, but that's not going to be enough. Ryan Priest, $5,700. Um, single lap speed was about abysmal. 36th. Um, no wonder he had the best, uh, best fall off speed, um, out of everyone because he was really slow for a single lap. Uh, 23rd in the 10 lap consecutive average. Um, he's got a 25th place average finish starting 26. Seven starts was 28.3. I mean, Pretty much all indications are you're going to finish where you started. Other than the fact your tire wear was really good, and maybe you get to collect a few things, but if you're 36th in speed, you're going to get passed. So the most you're going to do is pass everybody back and get up to 26. I mean, I'm going to, have, I'm going to take a few shots at him um, just to see if my data on, or my homework on practice, if there is any correlation between the two. Todd Gillen, next in line here at $5,600, starting 28th, 24th in single lap, 17th in 10 lap consecutive average, average finish of 28 points, zero, um, so pretty much average of where you're starting. He finished 35th in this race last year, a 31.5 average finish. Oh, uh, yeah, you're pretty much going to finish where you start, um, unless we get some carnage or something weird happens. I mean, I'm going to have a, because I got to have some of these cheap cheaper options, I'm probably going to have 5 to 10% usage on Todd Gillen, but probably not a whole lot. Uh, Zane Smith, uh, 22nd in single lap, 15th in 10 lap consecutive average, starting in 18th. He's got an average finish of 30th out of the five races we're looking at, and a 24th place finish in this race last year here. Or, uh, I mean, it, Zane's had almost as bad, bad luck as uh, Austin Dillon. So until Zane's luck changes, I don't have a whole lot of interest in Zane Smith this week. Uh, Harrison Burton, at this point, how much longer have we got to go before the Wood Brothers just say, okay, we're, we're, we're done with this great experiment. Time for Harrison to go back to the Xfinity Series and let's bring Chandler Smith up here to give him a shot. Um, $5,400 starting 29th. He was 35th in single lap. Didn't even do a 10 lap consecutive average run. Um, he's got a 25.8 average finish out of the four races that we're comparing to because he did not run the 2021 season. He finished 20th in this race last year. Uh, yeah, I mean, which means he has two starts here at Texas. And if he finished 20th here, it means he finished 18th in the one before that. I mean, that might be the only indication that he has any chance of being better than 29th. And at 5,400, I know we got to run some guys back here that are cheaper. Maybe one or two or three, but I mean, what, what has Harrison Burton done recently or ever in the Cup Series? I mean, other than I think the Indy Road Course where he got a top 10. Um, Justin Haley, who has been outperforming himself in this 51 car, or at least Rick Ware's outperforming itself compared to what it used to. Um, and Justin Haley's not bad at this track. Um, starting 32nd, now his practice speeds were 31st. Um, 
only did 17 laps, but that's pretty normal for a Rick Ware car. They typically try not to abuse their stuff during practice. They kind of go out, they shake the car down and go, okay, we're good. Don't go out and kill yourself in qualifying. We'll just make it up during the race. Um, and they've been doing that this year. Um, Cosgrala had a good run last week. Justin Haley's had a couple of good runs. Uh, I mean, both 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 of them in Bristol had good runs. Starting 32nd, I don't mind taking some shots on Justin Haley. In fact, I mean, I've got 0% usage right now. That's probably going to be closer to 5 to 10. Probably closer to 10% usage on Justin Haley because I need to save some money. Um, and there's a couple more guys back here that we'll look at, but I don't mind probably having the Justin Haley play. I don't... I, I mean, it's very, very normal for Rick Ware to not be fast in practice and end up having pr speed during... The race and that's pretty normal for what they've done for years they don't run a whole lot of laps in practice unless they've got an issue uh during practice that they need to work on um but if they think they've got a decent car and everything's running fairly well they'll they'll just park it and save the the miles on the engine so um that's just their mo so not completely nervous about that justin haley's got an average finish of 20.2 out of the five races we're comparing to 17.7 average finish here at Texas. Yeah, I don't mind taking a few shots on that. Um, Daniel Hemrick, starting 38th. Shotgun on the field. Practice was 37th in single lap, 28th in 10 lap consecutive average. He's got a 19th place average finish out of the five races we're comparing to. And if we look way back in our time machine when Daniel Hemrick ran in the Cup Series before, he's got a 24.5 average finish here at Texas. I mean, when you're starting shotgun on the field, just don't let Ty, uh, don't let uh, Kyle Busch wreck you when he spins, um, and you'll end up getting some points. I mean, I mean Daniel Hemrick is not a 38th place driver. I mean, I'm, at this point, I'm not sure which one of these guys maybe Cosgrala, but Cosgrala's actually been finishing well recently too. Um, so either way. I don't mind the Daniel Hemrick play starting in 38th. There's nowhere to go but up at that point. Um, or you stay the same, which is really bad. Um, that's pretty much what uh, David Starr did last week at Martinsville. The moving chicane. Uh, Kazgrala next in line here at $5,100 starting 33rd. He was 38th in single lap, but like I said before, he did 17 laps. That's pretty much the MO of Rick Ware Racing. Don't beat up your car for practice. We'll figure it out during the race. As long as it all runs and moves in the right direction, they're good. Um, he finished 31st at Kansas earlier this year, starting 33rd. I, I would much rather take a few shots on Justin Haley, not as much so for Cosgrala. Uh, Ty Dillon, who uh, lost profit, really has interest in, and so do I. Um, starting 36. So let's let's break this down. He's starting uh, pretty much next to last. Um, next to next to last. Um, his practice speeds were 30th and 24th. Not anything to write home about, but when you're starting that far back, pretty much you shook down the car and it went in the right direction. Okay, cool. Um, and the three starts at the five races we're comparing to, which are pretty much all Texas um, in the Vegas 24. Um, he's got a 21st place average finish. He finished 19th in this race last year. Yeah, there was some carnage, but there wasn't that much carnage. He raced his way up into 19th. Um, that was not just gifted. That wasn't like uh, a Talladega who I got lucky and finished 19th when I was a really bad car. Um, you know, he, he actually... I remember he he runs really well here. In fact, for eleven total starts at Texas, he doesn't have any top tens, but he's got six top twenties and a twenty one point zero average finish. All of those stats are really good for somebody who's mediocre. Um, and I, and I, and I think Ty Dillon's a great guy. It just I don't you know until he gets things figured out. Um, yeah, I mean, he's now running the Matt DiBenedetto truck from last year and finishing worse than Matty D did in that truck. Now, there's lots of variables that happened with all that. I don't know if they're putting the same amount of money or whatever, but either way, um, 
20, I mean, you're starting next to next to last. You don't know where to go really but up. I mean, yeah, you can go 37th, 38th, but that's just not the average finish that Ty Dillon's got. So, yes, lost profit, absolutely, I think Ty Dillon is in play. Um, I've got 10 to 15% here. I probably could be closer to 15 to 20%. The thing is, though, a lot of people do the same research. So he's going to be probably pretty heavily owned. So if you're playing in tournaments, fire beware, he's probably going to be pretty heavily owned. All right, so who are the guys that I like? Um, I like the Kyle Larson, Denny Hamlin, Ryan Blaney, Ross Chastain, William Byron, Tyler Reddick, all potentially for wins or at least running and staying up front. Rex Jr., Christopher Bell, Bubba Wallace, Ty Gibbs, Alex Bowman, Chase Briscoe. Eh, probably not. They're starting up front. I'm not sure they finish up front. Um, guys coming from middle towards the back of the pack. I like the Chase Elliott play. I like the Joey Logano play. I definitely like the Brad Kozlowski play. Bush and Barry make me nervous. Daniel Suarez, I don't mind coming from 17th. Daniel Hummer coming from 38th. You have nowhere to go but up. Uh, Chris Busher starting in 19th. Eh, potentially. And for value, I definitely like the uh, Austin Hill play. Don't mind the Eric Jones. Jimmy Johnson plays are okay. Uh, John Hunter, I mean, Nemechek makes me a little nervous. Michael McDowell, you're starting too far up. Uh, Noah Gregson, probably starting too far up. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., a little inconsistent. Zane Smith, you're starting too far up. Uh, Corey LaJoy, no. Ryan Priest, maybe you're saving your tires and you'll end up having a decent run, but starting 26th makes me a little nervous. Osevar and Dylan both starting way too far up. Justin Haley starting in 32nd. I don't mind that one. Um, and I don't mind the Ty Dillon starting in 36. So that's kind of my breakdown real quick, real simple of who I like and who I don't like. Um, but either way, that is all I got. Um, let me know. What, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss next week um, how well or not well my, the information uh, that I dove into for practice does or doesn't do. And there's going to be some variables at every track. And we're going to start to uh, at least get some indications on which tracks are showing large amounts of tire wear and things like that. Um, next week, we'll have a little bit more time to, to discuss that. <laughs> You're welcome, Lost Prophet. I, I hope I hope you and I both can, uh, can take a bag home this weekend and uh, we can ha enjoy the rest of this year with, the, with our winnings. Um, so, so good luck. I appreciate you tuning in. Um, you know, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, make sure you tune in next week. Uh, we will not have any practice for Talladega. It'll all be just qualifying. Um, so next week will be probably a little bit shorter. It'll give us some time to kind of dive into what may or may not have happened at Texas compared to our practices and our uh, thoughts. So, but either way, next week, same time, same channel, same everything. Uh, about 10 o'clock next Saturday. Have a great weekend. Good luck tomorrow. Enjoy. Thanks. Bye. Get a good deep breath. Get ready to roll here. Only about one thing tonight. Get in the W, so got to be around the end to do that. Get ready to roll tonight, boys. Go have some fun. Don't get me any more fired up than I already am. All the way to the checker. You are fine. Nobody's got to run. Check a time, baby! Hell yeah. Proud of you there, man. Good job, pal. Great work, my man. Great work. Keep putting yourself in position. We'll win our share, right? We got one back today, brother. Good job. Yeah, for great job, guys. Excellent work, my man. Excellent work. Thank you. Man, that's awesome. Set out with a goal. We got it here, bud. Thank you very much. Really proud of you, man. Drove your butt off tonight. We had the best car here, bud. Probably killed our deal there. Did you feel like I gave one away? Yeah, boy. Way to rebound. Great job. Great job, bud. Really good job. Appreciate you hanging in there with us all weekend. What a weekend. Good job. Thank you.